Hello everyone from Weixin, a really tiny city in Yunnan that I had never heard of before and you guys have probably never heard of either. I really don't know anything about this place except apparently it has a population of 400,000 which is a lot to me as someone from the US that's like the population of Minneapolis but in China this is such a tiny city that it's not even on the tier system you know like Shanghai Beijing are first tier cities a lot of provincial capitals like Nanjing are second tier and it goes all the way down to eighth tier and this city is not even within that so in Chinese terms it's a very tiny place and I'm just really excited to check it out and see what life is like here The moment I got off the train, I saw this really nice little walking path here. So we're gonna walk from the train station into the city on this path and see what we find. So uh, it looks like this is the local graffiti wall. Aside from, you know, the main mural here, there's some little graffiti going on, but the graffiti artists are very polite, so they've drawn their stuff in pencil. So if the city doesn't like it, I guess they can come out with a big eraser and get rid of it. Oh, that's really funny. That's really funny. Look at this. We got elf woman here. A little elf thing. Oh my gosh, I almost missed this one. Tom and Jerry over here. They did a good job on the Jerry with the Tom. A little bit funky. Look at this little park. My first impression of this place, other than the really nice walking path and the very polite graffiti artists, was construction going on everywhere. This may be a small city now, but it's expanding at a crazy fast rate, probably mostly because of people moving here from the surrounding villages and towns. Even amid all the construction though, every once in a while you can see one of the old-fashioned stone houses. We've reached the main area of the city and just going for a stroll. Look at this place, the sidewalk is literally bigger than the actual road. Life is good. Bro, it's October. Hello. Some places take selling fruit very seriously. Look at this tropical vibe in here. Nice music, cute little baskets, little leaves. 10 out of 10. I really love this basket backpack aesthetic. Gotta get me one of those things. Aside from basket backpacks, another thing that is very in around here and also in Sichuan is these wicker baby strollers. But times are changing, so the wicker stroller has been upgraded to have the little plastic doohickeys on it for the babies to play with and also some gold paint to keep it classy. Rawr. The terrain here is pretty wild. Take a look at this. There's just a giant cliff thing right here, right across from these buildings. This crazy terrain is the reason why I didn't see a single bike in my entire stay in the city. But there are motorbikes and last year even shared motorbikes were brought into the city. That's what these yellow ones here are. Cute little park right here in the middle of this busy street full-blown aquaculture center just right here in the middle of the city and it's noon and the children just got off of school for their afternoon break and they are ready to get into some shenanigans those were all small-scale shenanigans this right here is the king of shenanigan Just when you think that you've walked out of the construction zone, you get right back into it again. 
It literally feels like half of this city is under construction. I'll have to come back here in another year or two and see what this place looks like. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Look at all those puppies. This entire city is just covered in walking paths. I'm all about it. Amid all the construction and the modernization, this place does have some kind of ancient looking architecture that was recently renovated just a few years ago. Cities as tiny as Waisian are jokingly referred to as being 18th tier because they are so small that they aren't even within like the main eight tier system. But for being an 18th tier city, I gotta say Waisian is a really nice place. City life doesn't have to be a concrete jungle. When you put in all these parks and gardens and trees and all these walking spaces, it just makes city life so much more pleasant. This place is doing its best to cover all of the like ugly urban things with cute murals, like these poles and these, I don't know what they are, like electricity boxes or something like that. Like there's cute little murals on almost all of them throughout the entire city. And some of them match like these two. Love it. If you're feeling inspired by all the art all over this place and you want to give painting a stab yourself, I would like to recommend to you guys the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can sharpen up your existing skills, learn a new hobby, or improve your lifestyle. And when it comes to the arts, there are endless options. Whether you're an experienced artist looking to fine tune your skills or you just want to try out something new and have a fun hobby and a way to relax, there is something for you on Skillshare. I recommend Watercolor Your World, a meditative approach to painting landscapes by Rosalie Hazlett. Her teaching style is fun and relaxing and she gives a lot of useful tips, such as making a soft and moody sky by wetting the paper before adding watercolor and blotting color away with a tissue to make clouds. On Skillshare, I can be completely in learning mode. There are no disruptive ads, and there are thousands of topics to choose from. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. The first thousand people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So right now I'm on the edge of the city in like a kind of suburban looking area. So. Let's see what interesting things we can find over here. I thought that by getting out of the city and into the mountains, I would get away from the construction, but nope. Construction is going on here too. Everyone is building themselves and their family a mega mansion. Yunnan has always been one of China's most economically behind provinces. So it's interesting to see this little transformation taking place at the edge of the city. I mean, it literally feels like every person's house is under construction and they're all building like these three, four, five, six level, like massive houses. Like I don't even know what I would do with all those rooms, but once you have the money to do it, that's like, one of the main things that people will spend like their extra income on around here and in a lot of places is building their house as big as possible. Hello. Hello. Where are you? Do you want to go to Sanbu? Can I help you? I'm in Sanbu. Oh, you're in Chinese? Yes, I'm in Sanbu. Where are you? 就没有具体的地方就在山里走呗你们这边风景挺好啊明天一个三五两平你们是从小就在这里长大的吗对呀我们家就是这里的我不行我就在前面这个最好的是是美国人好的是美国人你们这边是考什么产业赚这么多钱
。出去务工啊，去大去呃沿海的开发城、开放的呃城市去务工啊。哦，他们是在外面打工，然后回到这边找个房子是吗？对。那留在这个村里的人，他们主要是靠什么工作呀？是？那个农田嘛，还是有小工厂。嗯、呃，小工厂，你看，比如我们这边这里砖厂啊，还有那边是做门的呀，嗯，还有我们这边主要是开车的比较多，我们这边、哦、因为以前有有矿，嗯，所以驾驶员比较多。不来不来，你忙你嘞，不来我村上有房了，放不下，你快忙你嘞。<笑>这是你们这儿的公交车吗？我看到了好多这个绿色的车过来。啊、绿绿皮绿皮小小公交。乡乡村。啊，它是有固定的线路吗？还是？对呀、啊，它只能在规定的区域内跑。Apparently, these old stone houses are really hard to come by in the village nowadays because there was a subsidy project to help people build more stable homes. 很多平房是政府改的，是吗？对，自己出钱，自己出部分，政府补贴也出钱。这个是整个云南的政策吗？还是全国很多农村都是？所以像这种房子，就是三层的，就是特别大的这种房子，也是有一部分是政府补贴吗？是，这种是自己修的，特别穷的那种，就是你说的那种特别老旧的那种房子，政府才有补贴政策。这个政策是从什么时候开始的呀？最近几年吧，幺七年左右吧。They also brought me to one of the local temples, but this isn't a Buddhist temple that's open to everyone. It's the temple of a specific family for worshiping their ancestors. There are all kinds of interesting little nuggets in the mountains around Weixin. Let me show you guys another one. This little temple up here in the mountains has a great panoramic view of the entire city. Ah, this is their high school students. The teachers will give them these things to protect them. The school is also famous. Jinbang Timing. Apparently, there are two monks at this temple, and there's also a lady who lives up here, who I guess is maybe kind of like the keeper of this place. You three people are living here, right? Yes. Really good. No, we are three. Who else? Six. Yes. Who else? Who else? This is the manager. In this hill, do you feel lonely? Do you feel like there are many people here every day? Or do you feel like there are many people here every day? 哦，就是白天有很多人上来，是吧？白天都有人上来的，挺好，挺好。There's an interesting variety of couches outside the temple to、uh, lounge in, I guess, after the long hike up here. Kind of interesting. Never seen that before. There are actually three temples up here, and each one is higher than the one before it, so you can get an even better view of the city below. This colossus right here is apparently one of the local high schools, which has 5,000 students. It's huge. It looks like a college campus. Before we end this video, I just want to give you guys a tiny glimpse of the nightlife in this place. I took a wrong turn and like missed all the barbecue places and the bars or whatever. But this kid's nightlife is、uh, pretty interesting. I'll take it. Look at them go, getting wild. Look at this place. This is the tiny city knockoff version of McDonald's and KFC, like all mashed together. And it's called McShanky. Oh, if only someone had told them what a shank is. A 
I'm really intrigued by the sport that's going on over here. It's like the kids are on overly tiny bicycles, so they have to push the bicycle with their feet on the ground instead of pedaling it. The city streets of China see something new every day. That's all for today's video, everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed our stay in Weixin. It's definitely a really charming and friendly place and beautiful scenery with all these crazy mountains and mists and stuff. And now I am at the Weixin train station waiting for the train to go back to Chengdu. So I will see you guys next time.